Welcome to Lake Kivu here in Rwanda. So we arrived pretty late last night and we haven't seen anything. But first, let's have breakfast. So we are staying at a cute little lodge called Inzu right in front of Lake Kivu. Yeah, so the price point for this honestly was extremely affordable. Mm. It was 45,000 Rwandan franc um, per night. So for us it was a no-brainer. And it's honestly worth the price, Yeah, I would say. So we're going to show you around here once we eat breakfast. Mm. And I see the lake, it's a little hazy, foggy. Yeah, but the, so day's, we'll the day's young. Yeah. <laughs> So I got bag on cream cheese. I know it's not gonna be the same as home, but I just I had to try it anyway. It's actually dense like an actual bagel. Oh, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. Hey, cool shirt, Tracy. Where'd you get that? Adventure Seekers that store. <laughs> this little guy there woke me up this morning. And even in the middle of the night, roosters are supposed to just like scream like that when the sun rises. But at 3 a.m. he was doing that too. I think this rooster is definitely broken. Those rabbits are so cute. So now that our bellies are full, let me give you a small tour around this place of what you get for a very, very low price. <laughs> so behind me is the restaurant slash lounge. If you have kiddos, there's even a little play area there. And they have three different types of accommodations. They have <clears throat> cabins, bungalows, and tents. We are staying in the middle class, the cabin. So let us go show you that. Welcome to our home away from home. Welcome to our low cabin. We have a double bed, a light. We even have a plug. That's all you need, mosquito net. We're good. Now let's go show you the inside. So because it is an eco lodge, you have your shower and toilet separate. The toilet is a dry toilet. That being said, the shower, good pressure, and hot water. I'm very impressed. Welcome to our little bathroom. We have a shower, toilet, sink. We're good. So we spent the day relaxing here at the lodge, but also we went cooking with a Rwandan family, which was amazing. That's a different video for you guys. But for now, it is time for us finally to go see the lake, but we're gonna do it a different way. They offer a lot of different tours yeah. to go see the lake, but also to go see the famous singing fishermen. Yes, you heard that right, but, uh, but we're gonna go a step forward if everything goes to plan, because again, it's not really a tour. Lots of WhatsApp and we'll see what happens. Let's just say the road to get out of here is a, uh, a little bit bumpy. So we just made it on the edge of the lake and now we are waiting for our captain who should be here in six minutes. We'll see if he's on time. There's a guy looking at us. He's texting. We're texting. Pretty sure that's him. <laughs> you Edmund! Ah! It's him. Morning. Good morning. Hi. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. David, nice to meet yes. you. Welcome to the boat. Thank you so much. Well, what about me? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> On the lake we go. So beside us are the traditional fishing boat that they use here on Lake Kivu. We are on a wooden boat, no motor. Edmo is the motor, to be honest. He's our boat captain. I'm probably gonna start paddling soon because I feel really bad to have him paddle alone. I hope, I hope. Poor guy was paddling a lot. So apparently as the boys are paddling, I get to sit back and um, relax Thank and enjoy this boat ride. You know, sometimes you text people and then 
when you have the result, you don't really know like how you ended up in that situation. And that's kind of what it is right now. So the big boats that you saw there, they actually go out in the middle of the lake at night after sunset with lights and massive uh, nets where they catch a lot of little fish. And then I was like, oh, like I want to do that. I don't want to go on a tour. I want to do that. But I think it got lost in translation. Now I'm just with a piece of bamboo fishing right here. I mean, a little fish. I feel like it's still a local experience. The locals are here and it's an experience, so it counts. Catching anything? Not yet. <laughs> I got something, I got something. <laughs> well, that's a big fish right there. I wish it was actually my catch, but it wasn't. It was one of the young boys there. He's like, I got something, just take it for the photo. <laughs> Every time you put a fresh worm on the hook, throw in the water, within 30 seconds, they come, they nibble on it, they eat it all, except the part that's on top of the hook, and then they leave. Like, every time I'm like, I got one, I got one, and then I don't. And then I got one, and then I don't. So you see the guys on the rocks, they keep catching fish. Where is yours? I know. I didn't get one yet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You got it. <laughs> you got it, Tracy. Just go. I it lost down. it. You lo no, no, no. It's right there. <laughs> got it. You got it. We have a fish. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just had to get the lucky spot. <laughs> oh, you gotta take yep. it off the hook? Tracy? Nope, oh, okay. I can't do that. Edmund is gonna do it yeah. for you. Fish. <laughs> Shingo fish, wow. Here you go. Fish. <laughs> That's Tracy got the biggest one. <laughs> we got fish. Get another one? <laughs> oh! Whoa! Whoa, it's, <laughs> it's even bigger. Jeez. I got another one. <laughs> Hold it. Tracy, how do you do this? I don't know. I'm just patient. <laughs> Tracy has now caught the two biggest fish compared to every other fisherman there. They're like, she can stay, she can stay. <laughs> So our fishing session is completed. Tracy won. Um, she got the two largest fish, not just in the boat, but everyone. Everyone was there. Tracy won. Um, so finally, we're going to go see the professional. They're the singing fishermen. They're starting to go out and they're after mainly tilapia and sambosa, those little fish that you've seen us eat um, in this Rwanda series a couple of times. trying to get more information about the boats because I'm trying to understand what the poles are. I think I have a good idea and I'm trying to talk with Enmo, but like we have a little language barrier here because obviously I don't speak the local language. I'm going to try Google Translate and see what he says. Can you show him that at the bottom? He's like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not going to make any sense. <laughs> Google Translate does not work. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you my understanding of this and please correct me if I'm wrong. So there's three boats all connected together and basically they're doing that for two reasons. To share the load, but they're also dragging a very long net to catch those little fish and those tilapia. So that's that's what I'm pretty sure it is. Pretty sure.
So I agree, the singing fisherman is a must-see here on Lake Kivu. It is super cool to just like see them like all work in harmony while singing. Like it looks like the morale on this boat is very high. Nice meeting you. Yes. Cheers. Well, that was not the experience I expected, but you know, I think it just got lost in the language barrier, in the translation. My goal was to go fishing with the fishing fishermen. With that being said, we went fishing, we even caught some fish, actually Tracy did, and we saw the fishing fishermen. So I'll still write it as a win in my book. And we went with a fisherman. It, with a fisherman. You know what? I think I think we, we completed 75% of the mission, but definitely if you ever come to Lake Kivu, you can try to go uh, directly with them. Please do it for me. But otherwise, you, there's a bunch of people that will just bring you um, to see them with the sunset in the background. S like just hearing them singing and everything. Like it's a vibe. Like you have to try this out. Nice to meet you, my friend. <laughs> remember you from where? Yeah, Dilea. Oh, yeah. I remember your shirt. Yeah. And we are back to Inzu for supper. That's pretty much it. So yes, we ordered pizza, but we're still staying local with our drinks. I got the Primus, which sounds like a, a beer from Transformer. Primus. It does. And then I've seen it here, and maybe it has been in other countries, but I just haven't noticed, the Lemon Fanta. And they have the pineapple too, and I feel like I need to try the pineapple again mm -hmm. at some point. But I don't normally do sugar pop, but I had to try it. And I say that they're local because both of those drinks are actually, we drove in front of the yeah. factory um, on our way back from, uh, from the fishermen. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's big. Oh, I like that. It's so, kind just, of so, so, you can yeah. actually hear the fishermen from here. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So, while we're waiting for our pizzas, um, I think I forgot a few fun facts. And you guys know how much I love fun facts, and you're good. You're, you can't escape it. So, first of all, Lake Kivu is a massive lake, almost 90 by 50 kilometers, and it's in between Rwanda and the DRC, the Congo. And basically, the reason why those fishermen are going at night is because they're fishing with torches. So, basically, at night, when you have a bright light over the water, the fishes are attracted to it, and therefore, much easier to catch because fishes are not very smart <laughs> except when they eat the worm off your hook those fishes were very smart <laughs> Perfect. thank you welcome enjoy your pizza thank you so much thank you very much yeah. it's Mine test definitely just came out pretty good pretty good thank you yeah have a good night Well, today was a great day, and tomorrow is another day, and we're gonna see you guys there. Good night. Good morning, we are back in the car. We are going back close to where we were yesterday because mm -hmm. this is a very, very active volcano area, and they actually have hot springs. Natural hot springs. That's pretty cool. So, so we're gonna go try. check that out this morning. <laughs> So we made it to the hot spring. We just got a little explanation. So they have like different ones. They have this one, which is at 58 degrees, and they have another one on the other side, which is at 70 degrees. And the one at 70 degrees, you can apparently cook an egg in about 15 minutes. So we'll see. Oh, oh it's hot. Oh, even 58 degrees. Oh, that's hot, hot. How do you go in the other one? Oh, it's hot, hot. That's like my hot bath water. So yeah, I'm surprised you're doing. Yeah. I'm trying. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. 
<laughs> so basically this is caused by some lava and like I said volcanic activity underground which kind of resurface in this part of the water making the water super hot but it's funny because like there's the hot spring here there's another one on the other side but on the other side there it's the lake which is actually cold we're gonna check that out after because it's heated by the sulfur and like has natural minerals in it it does actually have medicinal purposes so like muscle aches helps with that helps with some stress yeah yeah uh, sorry i'm like looking at my legs and like only the bottom half was in there was already red so the bottom is actually like some sort of sand and little rocks and the rocks are like really cool they're like transparent See the salt I don't think so. I'm not gonna like it. It's funny how we are the only ones in what they call the cool pool. It's not cool. It's so very hot. And like when we came by the hot pool, there's people like fully submerged. And I don't know how they do that because this is even like hot Tracy bath water. <laughs> Interesting. Time to go inside Lake Kivu and see how cold it is. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's actually not that bad at all. I have to say, Lake Kivu feels really nice, but when you're close to the hot springs, even though the water is nice and cool, the bottom of the, the lake is really warm and you can see like at some places like bubbles like coming up to the surface. So the only other time that we went into a hot spring was actually in Kenya yeah. and it smelled like sulfur like a lot, a lot, a lot. And here it's really not that bad yeah. and the water is somehow less slimy as well. Yeah, so I guess too, it just depends on like the source of the hot spring yes. maybe. And what minerals and stuff yeah. are there. Because they're supposed to smell a lot like sulfur to yeah. be honest, but here, not that bad. No. I would say it's our first like natural rock pool to see it like truly bubbling up out of the ground. Like the one in Kenya, they kind of feed the water into a pool, whereas this is like fully natural, walled off. Yeah. And maybe you wonder where there's like cement bags everywhere. It's to keep the water level high enough for you to like sit in it because as soon as you jump over into the lake, the water is about like this high. On our way back, I really need to just touch with my foot because there's no freaking way I'm going into that. But I want to touch the hot one which is at 70 degrees Celsius, which everyone seems to enjoy, but I can't. Oh, that is very hot. This one is like steaming. Like there's literally steam coming out of the ground and coming out of the water. It's too hot for me. Too hot for me. <laughs> well, the hot springs, definitely something to check out. It's really cool. And like people are really chill, relaxed. Like, I mean, it's really like a local spot. Like there's zero other tourists. We we're in the area um, yesterday as well. Didn't see any tourists, but like everyone is just chilling, singing. Go to the cooler pool and it's all to yourself. <laughs> yeah, and definitely go either in the morning or late in the evening because in the middle of the day when it's like 28 or 30 degrees this is not fun too hot So first thing first, make sure to subscribe because there's actually one more Rwanda video coming next. But in terms of real life, this is our last day in the country. Yes. So Lake Kivu. Um, I think this is the perfect place to come if you're interested in local excursions. And I say that because we've done three different excursions. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see in the next one, the third. And it is definitely... Oh, that's sorry. squeaky. <laughs> it definitely feels a lot more local compared to other countries, other places we have gone mm -hmm. to. And they're like, let's experience yeah. things. Yeah. Um, so, local excursion. <laughs> this just is it. the place. Ah, there you go. This is the place to come. Yeah. And overall, I think if you've never... Uh, if you've never been to Africa and you're coming from mm -hmm. Europe, from Australia, from North America, I think mm -hmm. Rwanda is a great first African country yes. to visit because it's so it's so good. It flows. Yeah. The people are chill. It's so safe. Everyone is very chill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like you know, like it gives you a good first impression of Africa without mm -hmm. throwing you first in the hustle and bustle of some of their country, yeah. which we personally love. But sometimes it can be a lot if it's your first experience. Yeah. And I'm gonna just plug this place one last time. Um, we're staying at Inzu Lodge. This is not sponsored by them we paid to come here but i would say if you are good with like a camping vibe like i said it's dry toilets and mm -hmm. everything like that this is a great place because you can organize these local excursions directly with them and everything is so close around it's yes. very very well located so anyway yeah. we're gonna put their link down below if you want to check it out yeah and otherwise it's time for us to go back to kigali then go back to nairobi and go back to canada real soon 
Oh, uh, that's so, crazy. Less than two weeks. <laughs> crazy. Stay posted for all of that because there's a lot of crazy stuff coming. And until next time, see you guys. In the next one.